Hey guys, this is a pre-recorded match playing against Arca 113. Um, he's playing Order of the Dragon. We're playing on Himayama, and we're gonna play with the Mongols. Right, this is an interesting matchup. This is definitely a matchup with Mongols that you want to be as aggressive as possible, I think. And um, in this specific um, playstyle that I do. It's really important that the game ends as soon as possible, or you get as much oppression and real picks as possible because um, Order of the Dragon can really, really mess up the manga die in a, in a big way. So, we're just going to go for their standard opener here. His scout goes running around down here. We do spot it with our, our vision. And we were gonna, we were running straight to his side, taking sheep, and we do spot him with our vision here. So we get a little bit lucky there that he uh, he does this circle around the the water. I guess he's just making sure that no dock is coming up. Again, respectable play, and he's going back to collect his own sheep. He does miss this sheep here, so a little bit of a mistake on his part. Players so are going out for deer and boar. Going out for boar. Okay. Interesting. So I have been seeing a lot of Order of the Dragon players and HRE players for a matter. Um, starting on Deer, starting on Boar. And, you know, it's not safe resources, it's unsafe. But if you drop your... If you drop your... Um, a tower here, it becomes a really strong and safe form of 2k resources and very fast now. It definitely has its, its upsides. So he finishes scouting his side. He does miss a couple of sheep, I believe. Yeah, he misses one over there. And up here is all clear. Yeah, we scouted, we took his side of the map. And now we're trying to get to our side of the map. So he's taken all this, we took this side. So what's left is basically our side here. Let me look at the timing, we're looking to start picking up wood now. So he picks up two sheep from us, so he misses this one little sheep. This map is weird about that, and you have to be really careful with Himayama. He likes to spawn these sheep right on the edge, and there's always some weird wood lines. Like this wood line I think might be almost fully shut off or not a super small choke point. Run over here. And we're both going to middle. And he's able to snag this sheep in front of me or no? So they barely miss each other, so we both kind of are scouting my side as the last side. Comes out in our favor because we double back, we see this. And then in my vision, we drop this hawk and we uh we didn't spot him when when I played it, but here running by we do spot him so we see he's on our side and he's coming from over here and we have to go scout where we were gonna go scout over here and finish our side but since we saw his scout we know it's kind of pointless that he's already picked up all the sheep and we're not worried about him scouting this backside because we already scouted all of that so we're just gonna drop and head over to his side of the map and scout him because um, sheep should be pretty much all collected at this point and if we look at the map, there's only just a couple of stray sheep right here on his side that he does miss. And we pick one up over here too that we missed and he seemed to have missed as well. So we're just doing our standard 6 3 opener. And we're going to pivot into either um, Mangadai or, State, uh, or Keshik. And this all depends on how we, we play this here. And we scout and we see a barracks. So this is gonna be a manga eye opener for us. No matter what he makes, men at arms or spearmen, it's in our favor to use manga eye. And we spot this uh, this male over here. And instead of putting pressure on it, which I was thinking about doing, I decided to just leave it and keep going and let my manga eye hit. Excuse me. I'm gonna let my manga eye hit because if I hit with this right now with the con, it might trigger him to drop a um a tower and i don't want i want the tower drop if it does happen to be last minute as possible 
Um, if we look at his vision, he's scouting his side of the map looking for deer. He's finding out that we already took all the deer. And he's got more of the map scouted at this point, but um, we're definitely a lot more effective with our deer at the, or with our sheep at this point. Ben and I are on the way, and we gotta get our upgrade and dropping silver tree in this corner. Really nice spawns on Himayama sometimes for trade. Both of these are really good spawns for us. So, as we scatter on the sides here, we send our first Manganai out, We're getting our wheelbarrow now as well. Perhaps a little late, so I can say set a mega on the way. And we're harassing over here on the wood line in hopes that he drops like a tower or something over here and not over here. He does bring a gilded spearman over, so he's expecting Keshik pressure because it is what most Mongol players open with. And he's pulling his his spearman to deal with her con over here, but it's all just a distraction. So he gets really ballsy and tries to like fight us with the spearman here. And um, he should have pulled these villagers. So this this in and of itself is almost like a game losing scenario. He needs to drop the tower now with his hundred wood that he has. As you see it's gonna take us a minute to kill all of, kill these spearmen. And we're starting to chunk through them. And we're just gonna pull these villagers or this army away and uh, yeah this is basically the GG moment right here because <laughs> you can't lose um, five villagers at the start of the game seven minutes in and you lose five villagers like 25% of your eco is just gone it'd be like me losing like six villagers right now basically six seven villagers it should be wild right so the guild with men at arms takes no freaking damage. And we're chewing them with the best I can with the uh, Manga Dime. Now we're gonna go harass now his wood line. And now we're in a really strong position, right? We've got him food starved in the sense that he lost his his major source of food income. He was going for a fast castle, almost it looks like. Because he's floating a lot of food. Behind this we're dropping a stay, we're getting our double production Keshik's up. And we're harassing him off of this this wood line. And uh Yeah, go to that just do some work. Go to that just do some serious work. Yeah, indeed. So we just try to harass. And look at our vision here. We're trying to pull back pull these arches out of their, their comfort zone here. And we're just rotating to check gold, see if he's on gold. He isn't on gold, so we know this is a feudal play. He's trying to stabilize. Not looking to a fast castle here, even though he's floating absolute tons of food. Archers are out of position here, so we're going to take this fight. He focuses on my con, which is actually a big mistake. Because my con soaks up quite a bit more damage than my manga that I do. And that gives me a window to only to take the trade losing only two Mangadai. If he starts shooting my Mangadai first, he probably takes out three, maybe even four Mangadai. Because my DPS drops off significantly when the Mangadais go down, not so much when my Khan goes down. Would be nice if the Khan did more damage. I mean, there is a Joan of Arc now in the game, so I feel like it would be a little bit more warranted. We don't have a good idea what's happening. We are rallying the sheep across the map. It's pretty hilarious because I do think they have eventually get back there. Um, but yeah, we need to really deny this this wood line the best we can. We probably could have brought our Keshiks over here at this point. But we were looking over onto this food. I thought maybe he went into this different food. And this is a fight we don't want to take. Even against archers, against archers we do, but against gilded archers, this is like really rough. And he's got the jump on us, so he picks one before we even get a chance to do anything. So really bad trade. We're rallying up here towards the boar and deer just to prevent this. And this is a uh, okay, this was deniable, right? If we had all of our army here, 
the Keshex here. I think we 100% deny this and really you know, GG out, GG, GG him out of this a lot faster. But it doesn't happen. Behind this, our eco is going pretty good. We're gonna drop a second market since he's turtling. Third market, so we're gonna be able to boom really strong with our with our gold behind this. Trade isn't the best. Only at 43. We could almost rally to the other side of the map here. His army is holding here. And now it's a possible castle play, right? We're just trying to stabilize. He just fall back here. These are the spearmen from earlier that are pretty chewed up, but they hit really hard. They're just gonna fall back here. We're gonna go raid his wood line while we pull these troops back. At least we should have gotten and raided his wood line. We missed a small window there to hit probably Sniperville. But our eco is way ahead at this point, so we're just scaling. Okay, so now we're kind of splitting stuff up here. Focusing down villagers. Two veil picks is worth it. Now we're trading into these archers. Not a good trade, but it's um, a doable trade. But you can see we're suffering really bad against these archers. And we take a really bad charge into you. I was trying to pull these Kashyyyk and stuff into the, into the archers and I accidentally click them into the spearmen and we lose. Three Keshek? For basically nothing here. So finally able to get the Keshek under the arches here. But yeah, he wipes our army here and it's a really big swing in terms of destroyed value of army. So he does a really good job of holding and defending and microing this. And we do a really bad job. We basically just perhaps against like a really good player, but that's basically just like a throw right there. Because behind this he could um, age up. Akashic does come in here, but he uh, he reacts in time, so we just get a little bit of idle time here. Nothing serious. We do see a farms. You now we try to snipe a veil, but Gilded Archers do way too much damage. Absolutely sure this, besides the TC. So we're going to try to re-up, and what we're doing now is just dropping production buildings. Spending all of our wood on production, and we should be rallying villagers now on the food. We were kind of just just surviving off our initial stone and and, and, and main army from there, but and trade booming behind all of this, but now we have to actually like, well we're only on four traders, so yeah, definitely a bit of a mistake in terms of our macro. And not having that gold really affects us. That's why we're making four horsemen now instead of four Keshiks. And he's pulling out onto the deer here. Yeah, which we're in a really big pick right now, right? That's honey gem. So we are pulling Keshex over here to check this deer patch, and we totally forget to check the other one. Which at this point would have been huge. The army's almost macroed back up here. Trade is... <laughs> we got one in queue. So yeah, we're, we're definitely behind where we need to be in terms of our macro. We're basically all villagers right now. He's rotating wood lines. We figured that this wood was gone, so we we're gonna go into this back wood. We didn't realize they pulled everyone off of wood. And he's looking to age up you, right? And at this point, I, I think I've noticed that the spear, that the deer are getting chewed up and we're just bringing these Keshik over 
to be in position. He's tapping up. He's edging up the castle right now. It's really gonna hurt him. So we're bringing the Keshek over and got a nice big army of Mangadai and some Spearmen mixed in. Big thing just being the Mangadai. We're dropping a lot of ranges because we know he's committed into the, the archers and the spears. And yeah, we see this so get the cutoff with the first set of Keshiks. And this is just again game over at this point, right? Because he's gonna lose a lot of villagers here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine villagers. So it's like a third of his eco again now he lost it, so it's just over at that point, taps out. He did mention he doesn't know how to you know how unbalanced Mongols is and blah blah blah. And I told him really all he had to do was drop the towers on his pocket ecos, right? A tower here, two towers here, and he saves all of those bills, right? Uh, one tower here early on, and he had the resources for it. And all of a sudden, my first Magadai raid becomes useless. I have to go on the wood line, and then he has to. And then I basically have to take it down with. Um, um, you know, uh, cavalry. And uh, yeah. Just, uh, just, you know. Little details. This next match, we're playing as Byzantines. We're playing against the Peanut Jam on cliff sides. And uh, I think we'll just go for a Hippodrome aggressive, you know, H2 kind of a push. Malines are trying to boom up, get a fast castle. If they can, ideally, they want to just turtle and do it. So as much pressure as we can get on, if we can take down a pit mine or two, or even just deny the second pit mine as long as we can, that's going to really help force him to make army instead of just go straight boom and that will really help us um, scale uh, with him instead of him just out booming us because if he just goes naked fast castle he will just out boom us Four houses, so five houses, six houses. Fairly greedy opener going six houses. We're just gonna do nine two split and then rally three on the three to four on the wood, kinda of depending on what I wanna do, and then two on the food and then back on the wood. And I'll age up with four wheels. What's curious about his scouting pattern? See, we took his side sheep, and he oh, he got really aggressive over here too. I do like this scouting pattern by him. Because I got super aggressive and I'm just clean, cleaning up this whole side over here, right? And he's at 7, and we're at 7. So we got pretty much equal clearance here. This corner just avoid, this is why I avoid this corner, because there's, there's never anything in this corner. Did he miss any sheep here? He did not miss any sheep here. Just these two. And his backside. So it's the middle here. There's one sheep. Um, there's two sheep here. One of them just got picked up. There's two sheep here and then whatever he's got back home. He's coming back. Yeah, who would guess that there'd be a sheep right here, right? Just outside of his vision range. And we're scanning around back here. We're not privy to the information which side he came from. We figured that he came up and... I thought he came a little bit more closer to our base here. More like this. But he actually came a little bit further wider over here. So let's just kind of change our scouting pattern here. And now it's just kind of a race to this point right here. We both kind of know that that's kind of where he needs to go. He needs to catch this, what he that which he hasn't scouted yet. And I'm just trying to get there. And he dies back. Okay, he does scout the sheep. 
Let's pick both of them in front of me. So if we take a better angle, if we just go straight out, we reach this way before he does. So a little bit of a mistake on our part, not taking a more direct cut off there. On the back side of this, yep, six houses and a Mansa quarry. So again, this is just a greedy build. As much greed as possible there. Hippodrome up, horsemen are queued, and we're going to build our second sister now. In terms of vision here, we're scouting. Trying to find his gold. We see that's in the back somewhere, so we're going to go check that out. We're going to connect our assistants here, and then this village is going to get rallied onto gold. We got 12 on food, which is plenty. I'd like to see my macro get adjusted now onto wood. Hopefully. We're also idling our TC here. There we go. TC's there we go. And onto wood. Order settlements, expilatories. We know that somewhere back here is his gold, and that's what we want to try to find. And he's just uh, mining wood and prepping for his boom here. He's also getting his upgrades. He's getting wheelbarrow and broad axe. And we've got an, a military upgrade, which is a pseudo eco upgrade if I can find build picks. And we've gotten a lumber camp off, so that's probably going to be one of our first eco techs, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. A little bit behind him, but the times is fairly quick 24 seconds to the 30, so we'll come up a little bit faster here. System is on dialectus. And we're just burning his houses. He sees the reacts with barracks, double barracks. Smart move. He can definitely fight us with that. When we take our first horseman, we're running around checking for other pit mines first. If we look at our vision here, we've got a scout. Over here, checking out these golds. We got our first horseman over here checking out this gold. Another scout on the way. So we make we make a couple scouts just to double check. Try to catch the second pit mine in transition if he goes for it. He is a conqueror and he's smart enough to realize that you know behind this aggression he really needs to stabilize before he moves out to the second pit mine. That was a good play on him. Behind this, we need to get more ecos. Text. We're at 140 gold, so it'd be nice to see one of these ego techs clicked up. Archie range is coming up, and uh, just cranking out horses constantly because we have the food eco for it, right? It's time to float a little bit of food, but that's okay. So we fall back here. Four Donzos, no reason to stay. You see, he has to invest another 100 wood more than he usually than he would have had to. Well, other details like that is always nice. Destroyed value always comes out. And it's too bad the destroyed value doesn't show up on um, of buildings, doesn't count as destroyed value, because that would be a really big deal, right? It'd be nice to see that. So, we have a nice army here. It's all cavalry, though, it's the only bad side. And if you look at our vision, again, we're still scouting with a scout, and we send another scout over here, and we're up to three scouts now. So the idea is to patrol over here, keep track of these golds. I really should, um, what I really should have done is, uh, instead of rallying like this, I should rally from here to here. Right here to here. Patrol this, because this is great food, decent wood, both golds, right? And over here, we're, we're uh, rallying between these two, checking things out. Um, with our horsemen, we just check things out. We do spot a stable coming up, and we're able to burn it down. He cancels it, but since we burnt down most of it, he loses quite a bit of wood there. Not the full 150. He does a javelin throwers with six donsos, almost snipes our horsemen. Gotta really respect the donso mass. Um, we're just going to pull back and wrap around, try to find some picks here and there. You can see that he's heavy on gold because he's trying to crank out um, cows, double mill, and pasture as well. 86 food units, that's two villages worth, right? 
So we're ahead right now by three villagers because of our system, but it's actually now we're actually behind because he's got two villagers here, two villagers here, almost three villagers here, two, four, seven villagers with a passive eco that he's got here. But we get a really nice raid here. We pick um, a real, get some idle time. Fall back here. But we weakened these villagers quite a bit. I thought I had picked a couple whales here, but I guess it was just the one. A little bit unfortunate. Would have liked to see a little bit more. And on this side, we're trying to get aggressive. I should have come up with my archers. Instead of tapping up this, uh, this Kyra Siphon, I probably could have came up and been sniping with my whales here. Or sniping villagers here. And he's spending most of his resources on his boom. And um, yeah, he's actually ahead of us a good amount here. But we're just investing entirely into aggressive aggression at this point. Uh, we would be nice to see our wheelbarrow tech come through as well as our horticulture. So definitely a little bit slacking on that regards. Kyra Siphon is going to push. We want to take out the stable because we know the stable is probably going to be the sofa. And sure enough, it's sofa. So the sooner we take this out, the better. Army wise, we got a much bigger army. But his army's gonna be able to deal with us pretty well here. Because we have a decent mass of archers, but it's not enough archers to actually like. to deal super well with everything. Accidentally. There we go. We re micro onto the archers here, onto the spearmen. Start picking spearmen. And then a little bit of mis mismanagement here. See, we accidentally clicked up, let them uh, aggro onto Sofa for a little bit. And the key is to pick up these, these spearmen as quick as possible, right? So, not the cleanest of micro here. These two sofas are just chewing through us. And yeah, there we go. A little bit, of, a little bit of micro here. Clean this up a little bit better. These two sofas should have been picked up sooner. And now these four javelin throwers. And he's got to fall back. So we trade out, but again, we're still kind of ahead. Would be nice to see um, these horsemen come around and raid. Kind of really split his army again. But I was worried about these. Um, these archers being able to hold. And behind this, he drops another stable. He drops his. He still got his two barracks, but he did lose another stable. So he's been losing production a little bit um, throughout. So that's definitely affecting. But behind this, he still got two ranches. So that's an additional 40. Another one here. That's another ranch. So this is two, four, six villagers. Right? Um, we do idle our TC a little bit, it looks like. That first raid I thought here, I really thought I picked two more villagers. I thought I was further ahead, but it looks like I was only one villager ahead. It's a pretty big Car Siphon hits. It does minimal damage, right? And we try to contest him re-upping, but we do notice that he's uh, got a really decent force, like he messed up real quick. And it's so hard to to micro against this sometimes. The Keshex from our mercenary house really save us here to deal with these jab throwers. They soak up a lot of damage there and allow the Kyra Siphon to take down a barracks. Okay, what been, I, and here I kind of mess up. I, I pull the Kyra Siphon back. But I really needed to use this just to get some tempo up against the barracks or push it down south against anything around the backside here. So we try to fight this, but. Again, this just basically puts it in a rough spot where we're basically exposed our archers to nothing. 
And a Kyra Siphon could have been pressuring behind us. You see, because we're fighting this army, right? So if we had been fighting and the Kyra Siphon had been pushing, we would have been in a much better fight because it, it would have, this would have drawn some aggro for us, right? So now it's going to slow down instead of drawing aggro. This army's not there, nothing. So it, it dies for basically nothing. A little bit unfortunate. Um, he's going for another um, cattle ranches. Floating absolute tons of gold. If he goes for Rimba, I think so. He goes for the Fulani, right? But um, this is definitely a Fulani play. But if he goes for Farimba, goddamn, he's got a lot of gold. I think he he might be able to just tempo kill us if you had gone for Rimba. So behind this, we're dropping a couple more ranges. We were floating a good amount of resources as well, but overall, he's floating a lot more. And we're gonna go up to our T3 now. Right now, we're only at what is this? Um, 14%. So what is it? If, um, four plus. Two, so six, six, seven villagers bonus, and he's had two, four, six, eight. Hmm. Oh, I can't see. Yeah, that's two, four, six, eight villagers. Eight villagers plus uh, one or two plus eight, ten. Almost three here. He's almost at 12 villager leads, and we're only at eight plus. Uh, no, we're at like seven. He's got like a five villager lead here, so we're almost we're about even here. Systems are keeping us definitely on pace here, and the big thing is we've been investing entirely in army, and he's investing in this boom stuff, right? So it's definitely gonna give him a good tempo. But the big thing is, we've basically been able to deny a second pit, right? He hasn't invested in a second pit mine. He's got the man's, of course, so it doesn't really have to, but it really does affect the tempo significantly, not being able to drop that second pit mine, which he has a safe one right here, right? And he's getting ready for a castle play here. It's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 17, 19 villagers basically. But behind this, we raid behind the back, get a veil pick. So we're able to site just two villagers here. Again, I thought I'd get a little bit better there. But the big thing is, he was looking to push us, and we were able to pull him away with our army here and we do spot this sofa raid if we change our vision here we spot this sofa raid right so in reaction to this we know he's going for our 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 deers and stuff over here probably or he probably guesses that we're on berries right because the deers are still up or into the game late so bears are going to be getting taken we push you on the front to draw this army because i can deal with these horses but i can't deal with everything right and when, um, this raid is coming in, and with the Keshex we're going to be able to fight this, but it's definitely a bit rough. But the plus side is we're taking this fight under tower, which is going to help a lot. And then we're taking this fight here, shield wall is activated now, which is going to help our Lamatane survive these jab throwers significantly. Um, jab throws really have more than anything hit a bunch of damage. And thanks to the, the Latane, we probably trade a little bit better than we could have and let this draw out a little bit longer. And our Keshik have cleaned up the other side and are coming over here to hit. And behind this, oh I forgot to... <laughs> behind this we get a ton of kills, so from 3 villager kills to 10. During this whole fight, this whole exchange over here, he loses a ton of villagers on this uh, over here. He does pull these villagers. And we spot this 
pit mine going up, and so we're gonna pull our cavalry over to here. Again, this is where if this rallying was a little bit better, we would have spotted this and we could have sniped those four villagers as well. And his army is now almost purely um, jab throwers. And again, he's floating a shit ton of gold. Um, we do try to micro this deal with this, and this is a bad trade. Like, but this is kind of speaks to the the problem with jab throwers, right? They counter archers. But their DPS in general is so bad. It's so it's like slow that it's not really worth it. Over here, we're trying to burn down this pit mine. We double check and we do spot four villagers over here. We're gonna pick off those. And we use the, the Kaya Siphon again as a distraction. We're not trading great here, just enough for a Kaya Siphon to get some damage and we're just gonna fall back. Kashyx are pretty much getting constantly produced here, which is a big deal. And we're gonna get this burned down on this pit mine and the houses, which is gonna be nice, right? But again, this this would have been really nice to pick. Now, at this point, if we just pause real quick, um, fifty. So it's like one. This is like two, three, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve villagers. Six times six is thirty-six. Twelve. So probably. 13, 14, yeah, we can say 14 villagers worth easy here, right? 14 villagers worth, plus two more, so 16, and almost three villagers, but let's just say two, right? 16 plus two, we'll say 18, plus a little bit of here, so we're talking like 19 villagers worth of passive ecosystem generating. That puts them at um, 56 mils of eco basically right not including the bonus eco text because we're we're basically the same here right we're nullified in that in that regards and we're c5 influence or c3 influence with 53 villagers we're talking um 18 i believe <clears throat> 18 percent of 53 um that puts us close to i don't know five <laughs> 0.3 plus 2.5, so another 7. So we're at 60, though. So yeah, we're a little bit, a, li a little bit ahead. But that's with 17 real kills. Without those 17 real kills, we're not ahead here, right? So this army is. I thought it was all. I thought it was all jab throwers. I didn't even see the dancers. That's why my Kashyyyk's got massacred here. I totally didn't see the Donsos. And it's hard to tell the Donsos from the from the Spear Throwers. I don't know if it's easier on better settings. But on these settings, it's definitely tough. So when I come back and check this out, I was like, oh shit, I can't believe I lost everything. We focus on burning down this Palisade Gate first, and then we're going to go check food. He's building more infrastructure. And he's got tons of wood. And his food income is... Passively, you know, as good as mine is, right? And at this point, our front push has kind of fizzled out um, against this jab thrower wall. And we're just looking for little raids here and there. He's going to rewall this. Nice little play here. We're going to burn down on this mill. It's not really that important in the grand scheme of things. And he's able to clean this army up, but we're safe behind this, and we're looking to castle behind this, and it looks like so is he, right? Production for both of us has kind of stopped, and we both kind of sense and feel that, you know, production's kind of stopped. We both have kind of stabilized. Two more real kills, pretty big deal. And now his, uh, all of these villagers accidentally got aggroed onto my Kashyyyk here. And this is a really big switch here, right? It was nice to pick those five, six Keshek, and an additional villager. Behind this, I'm fucking up. I was trying to drop this Golden Horn Tower in a good spot, and I couldn't figure out <laughs> where and stuff, and it took me a little bit long, and because of this, I lose all these Keshek's basically for no reason, right? Um, all those Keshek's, if I had saved those Keshek's for castle timing, would have been a really big deal.
And now for pretty much the first time in the game, we're behind in terms of military count. But he's looking to castle up as well. And he's wall in trying to protect himself here, so... We do scout over here. We spotted these walls getting built, so that kind of triggered us to scout this, and we do spot this. Okay, it would have been nice to... To have reacted to this a little bit. A little bit sooner. We are able to pick a, a couple of villages over here. And burn down the hole in this wall. And his pit mines again. He's throwing just one pit mine. And it's a very susceptible pit mine because there's no longer uh, a mine here. So he burned that down and that's one pit mine gone forever, which is a pretty good, pretty big deal. So we're tapping up with eight. So it's a little bit more economical. And we are going to finish before him. But he is tapping up with more rills. So again, our eco is a little bit better in that regards. But there's a big difference in terms of villager count here at 62. But don't forget everything that happens with this. And then Nero Cap provided an additional 20 food per minute. So he's going to jump this up significantly, right? 20 times 20 is another 400 food. So another 10 villagers worth of um, eco, which is huge. So this, this is going to go from 80 to, the, to like plus 60. So 140 ish per minute, which is again huge. So we wanted to raid here, and we just have to be careful, right? Because we know he's got a, a, an army of spears and jab throwers, right? And we want to get him with the element of surprise at the same time. And this is why the the Malian fast castle boom is so strong. If you don't get aggression and don't don't get damage in, like because we're twenty four villagers, we're a little bit ahead in terms of eco, right? But if we don't kill those twenty four villagers, he's ahead of us at this point by twenty villagers, which is crazy, right? We're on C four systems behind this as well, so we're at level four, so we're at six point four times six point four times two basically, so it's a good amount. So we're cheering up these deer. A little bit unfortunate here because we have a lot of villagers here and they're not really protected. Over here we try to sneak a horseman through, but his army is over here. These self are going to do some good damage, they're all veteran. And we're getting our veteran upgrades for our horsemen. And our Lemitani and archers are already veteran at this point. Sending the Kyrie Siphon to burn down this main point. This is Rylan, we need to get our, our veteran techs here and we start losing villagers here. Again, pretty unfortunate here. So we have a decent cab force that we were going to use to raid. But basically he loses his front line here and this is all just archers now. But behind this he's picking up a bunch of villagers. So things are starting to get a little bit dicey here for us. And our Keshik are still feudal rage, so we do want to upgrade that. Um, as soon as possible, and we don't notice this 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 raid, so we lose a lot of villagers here. Yeah, which is a big deal, right? Because that puts us in a in kind of a losing position here. Behind us, though, we're taking this small raiding force to go raid elsewhere. And we see his army pushing forward, and we have to kind of respect the push here, right? And his army is mostly ranged units. I think we have a little bit more mixed of an army. He pulls his sofas up, but he's done a lot of damage, right? And in terms of eco, we're, we're, I feel like we're behind now at this point. Yeah, our eco is almost equal here. But he's got a pretty significant bonus. I mean, we still have our RC, RC5 bonus now. Which is nice, right? A quarter more. He's gonna raid over here. We're gonna lose a couple more bills. And during this fight, he does a good job of pushing us here. And we're losing whatever these 10 villages here. But behind this, he's losing bills here. He does pull villages to take this out. But while he does that, he loses um, a bunch of villages over here. So we're both trading out bills. But the big thing is now, he doesn't have much he, he gets his army wiped at the front right we lose a level of villages here which is unfortunate <laughs> like 
Not only unfortunate, but just really bad that we didn't even notice. But behind this, we're fighting, and his attack thing got happened at the same time, and he didn't hear what happened over here, and we just killed an absolute ton of villagers here. I don't know, probably like 15 villagers as well, so. In terms of trading out villager kills, we're definitely in a good spot now, right? We equalized with this nice raid over here. A couple Keshe, a couple horsemen, cataphract. Now we're just gonna rotate. He starts raiding us over here. We are able to rally and recognize the raid. Only leaves on one villager, two villagers here, which is decent. But behind this now, our front side, um, we're kind of have a big mass here and pushing him back. We're able to take into these better and Musafati fairly easy. We drop our triumph to take this fight, just so we can heal up. Behind this, he does find the lone stone miner, which isn't end of the world. But we camp our army on his production here, right? Which basically means he has to win this fight. And we got more troops coming in. Like, he has to win this fight. Because if he doesn't, we're on his production and anything that he pops out is just dead. Doesn't matter how many resources he has. These are all going 100%. They get Everything gets one shot when it comes out in production and then in a really bad spot from there. So we've stabilized elsewhere. And he taps out because now we're just sitting on this production basically, right? And what's he gonna do? Behind this we also have a, a raiding force at Cav that was free. That basically knew that this was all clear in the backside. And was gonna wrap around to the front. To the wood or the gold. So yeah. Good good match for opponent. Good game overall. It was, a, it was an interesting match. And uh, thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you on the next one.